Well, well, uh, welcome to you all. Uh, it's lovely to see some people are busy, we haven't seen them in a while. Um, and we have a one-way system, so as you can see, you're socially distanced, um, and we move you around as little as possible. We will stand for the, uh, for the hymns, and we will sing, um, and we have um, James, and many have driven out from Thornton Cleveland's again, and so we have an organ, um, so hopefully you'll know the hymns, and we will sing those hymns, um, sing as loudly as you can. The, the, the building is big and you've been ventilating it. We operate a one-way system, so when you leave, coffee is here in the pulpit, um, and then you go out of the new store. So just so that you, if you haven't been for a while, uh, you did that. Um, so, uh, welcome. Uh, as I've been saying each week for the last few weeks, um, the theme, the readings are all about Bread of Life, which is absolutely right and wonderful. Um, however, it's quite difficult to link that to something different, so it's not me repeating myself. Um, so the theme for this morning is, is peace. So at a time when we all have uh, Afghanistan and many other parts of the world in our prayers, um, hopefully that theme will fit very well and hopefully you'll understand how it links in with Jesus' bread of life um, in, as, as, our, as our role model. Um, so I think we'll just start with the first hymn, if that's right, which is in number 578, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And that we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the greater benefits that we have received at his hands. To set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from our ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable of others. Stir thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
your cue sheet. And in Psalm 34, let see, I don't think there is another one. Can you sign up to something? Share with, share, share with the brain. Okay, and we're not going to do all 20 verses, we're going to say every verse. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears, and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones, and not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We sit to the first reading. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore, revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and, us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites, who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Here ended the first lesson. <clears throat> I'm starting to sing the TDM. If you see that I've crossed out here, this is not meant to be crossed out at the bottom, so we'll sing all the left hand and the bottom two bits. <laughs>
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, <clears throat> chapter 6, reading verses 56 to 69. Jesus said to the crowd, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. <clears throat> but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, Many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Here end of the second lesson. So we'll stand again to see the Jubil Jubilati Day.
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Forgiving us these things, whereof our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and med med mediation of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The second college, please. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal freedom, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all the souls of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the third college for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we may fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy government, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our next hymn, which is 383, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
an heavy book, so I'm going to stand here. So as I said at the beginning, we were uh, we have a, an ongoing theme of bread of heaven and, 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 and eternal life through Jesus and um, and, uh, and and Jesus was sent by God. Um, so in, in the, the first reading we had Joshua talking about gathering the tribes and and, 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 and getting them to present themselves to God and to, um, through that, uh, remembering to honour one God rather than the others that they had previously um, worshipped. And they were told to choose whom they would serve and choose and serve God with all your heart and that God gives signs and preserves us all the way. So real hope, real reassurance that we're not alone. And then in the, in the John chapter in the Gospel, Jesus said, I live because of the Father. So whoever leads, whoever feeds on me will also live because of me. The bread of eternal life. And this was said in the synagogue of Capernaum, as you've heard. And what I want to do is read um, it's a Christmas poem, but I want to read this poem because it feels so right for today, for where we are as we have the circumstances, uh, etc., in the world, uh, from Haiti to, who, you know, those peoples in Haiti who had trouble not so very long ago, and 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 then the, the, the current earthquake and, and, and so on, and then of course Afghanistan, Yemen continuing and so on. So I'm going to read the bit before. So this is a Maya Angelou poem called Amazing Peace. And this Christmas poem imagines a lasting peace between the adherents of all major religions, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim. The poet finds a remarkable power in the softly spoken word peace, just like in the hymn we just sang, which can triumph over war and violence. Angelou, who was recognised throughout her life as a political figure and civil rights activist, concludes the poem by addressing the word peace to her brothers and sisters in the human race, before finally speaking the word to her own soul. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes, and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Flood waters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and grey and threatening. We question ourselves, what have we done to affront so affront nature? We worry God, are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Or Christ enters, if you like. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancour, come away, come to the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Flood waters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things. Even hate, which crouches breeding into dark corners. In our joy we think we hear a whisper, at first it is too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. It is louder. Louder than the explosion, the bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but true peace. A harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas, 
We beckon this good season to wait a while with us, we, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty, we, the Jew and the Jainist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us, so we may learn by your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, or it will be, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate at the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at each other and then unto ourselves, and we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, Peace, my brother. Peace, my sister. Peace, my soul. Just turn to each other and say peace. Peace, my sister. I just want to close with the prayer of St. Benedict. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now sing our next hymn. <coughs> sing our next hymn, 486, Jesus Good Above All Other. 87.
Dear Lord our Father, we ask you to protect the Church with the whole armour of faith and righteousness, and especially with our new Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, and the Archbishop of Canterbury working together to find ways forward. Help, help the Church to be strong in spirit, and may your people work powerfully for the salvation of all. Keep us firm in loyalty to Christ, the word of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, Lord, that you bring peace to the many areas of strife in the world, especially in Afghanistan. And you turn the hearts of those who take the weapons of destruction and give them a truer vision. Bless all who work for peace. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. We ask that you grant our families the security that can come only from faith. That you bless us, our friends, and our neighbours. And that you and, and that you be sure you be our sure defence against all evil. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. Lord our Father, we ask that you pity and pardon those who have lost faith which they once held. Help them to hear your voice in the darkness. Come to them with the assurance that, though they have forsaken you, you will never forsake them and will bring them home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to those for those who, having come to the Father through the Son, have earned into, entered into strength and eternal life. Give them rest and peace now that the warfare of this world is over for them. Merciful Father, accept your prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together and sing the next and Final hymn, Happier Day, Day that Love God, 456. <laughs>
Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the, device, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as, as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And I'm just going to finish with the blessing. You can stand for this. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep all our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst us all and remain with us all, always. Amen. Amen.